Hello, hello. So we built this uh, reference architecture here in a bunch of infrastructure. That's great. Let's actually start running some applications on it now. So we'll do that in this video. We'll run some applications on both the production VPC here as well as the development VPC. Uh, to do that, there are some demo applications here and we'll focus in this video on the backend application, okay? So go ahead and click on that. Go down here. Uh, so the demo backend application is just for demonstration purposes. It provides an endpoint that just simply returns the number 42. Okay, uh, and it's a Sinatra app, so it's pretty straightforward. And here's some instructions to kind of clone it down and kind of get it testing locally, just so we kind of get our variants and knows and know what's going on. Okay, and then after that, we'll actually get that same application onto ECS and kind of deploy it. Okay, and this uh, repo has like, everything you basically need. Uh, it's, everything's been pretty much kind of set up already. You just have to configure some settings and deploy it. So let's go ahead and go, go ahead and go through these instructions now. Let's first clone the repo down. So I'm just grabbing those uh, instructions and I'll explain it as I go along here. So we did a clone, uh, we CD into the repo, uh, the folder, and then we did a bundle, okay? And then what we do is I do a bin, bin web just to start it up. And then um, I'm gonna open up another terminal here and just curl the endpoint just so you can kind of see it and we can test it. 80, 80, and it just returns 42. Okay, so it's working locally, we're good there. Okay, let's go back to the readme. Now, this is the important part, just getting the application from uh, your local machine onto ECS. And this application is already been Dockerized, so all we have to do is kind of run through these commands and, like I said, configure some settings. The first thing we actually have to do is since, uh, we have to create the ECR repos, because uh, this is going to be a brand new account, so we don't have any repos or anything. We're going to use ECR as the repository source. The, this assumes that you've set up your ADOS profiles already. If you haven't set those up, then you just go to the settings uh, setup right here, and the structures are in there. I also cover in another video. We're gonna go ahead and create these, re these repositories and close that down and just run these two commands right here. And that should create it. So it created uh, two repositories right here, the development one and the um, production one, okay? And what we have to do is we have to grab those um, repository uh, URIs and then actually update uh, the ufo.settings.yml. And what this project basically has a bunch of starter files already, but we have to configure the settings. Um, and what we can do is, I guess I think I'm gonna put this side by side like this or on top of each other so we can see it. Okay, so I just grabbed the development uh, repository. Now I'm gonna grab the production repository and update these settings. Because uh, these uh, environments are actually on completely different AWS accounts. So these repositories are actually completely different uh, on different accounts also. So you can actually put different accounts where you can just, uh, just name the repositories differently if you're in the same account, okay? Notice in this ufo.settings file, uh, there is a, a ADOS profile kind of um, a setting also. So UFO also understands this uh, concept of tightly binding ADOS profile to UFO environment, okay? And this UFO tool that I'm talking about right now, it's a tool I wrote to basically handle ECS deployment. Uh, no, that's not right. UFO ships, there you go. Okay, so uh, this is the tool right here. It um, basically will get our Docker image onto ECS uh, pretty uh, easily. It just does three steps. It builds a Docker image, it registers what's called ECS task definition, uh, and then it deploys it to ECS and creating a, a load balancer optionally, okay? So that's what we're doing. We're just kind of configuring the settings now because everything's basically being set up, okay? So we adjust the ECR repos already. We did that. We have to adjust the network settings now. So network settings, like your VPC for development is gonna be different than your v VPC for production. So we need to kind of adjust those. The files to adjust those are just right here. So let's just go and take a look at the files real quick. So it's under settings, network, and we'll look at development first. Okay, so there's some starter values here, but we actually have to use the real actual values to specific to your account. So let's go ahead and go grab that. I'm gonna to go to the VPC, uh, uh, stack there and click on outputs and then here's the VPC. So I'm grabbing the VPC first <clears throat> and just pasting here. So that takes care of that. Next is we're gonna configure the subnets that the application uh, to tell UFO where to uh, run the containers, okay? So that's ECS subnets. And we're also gonna do the load balancer ones too, okay? And I'll, I'll explain why, okay? So ECS subnets is gonna tell UFO where to place the containers on. It doesn't know which subnets within your VPC. You might want to put in public subnets, you want to put, might put in private subnets, it doesn't know. So uh, what we're going to do is, since this is a backend and it's meant to be an internal application, we're going to use private subnets for containers, definitely. We well, should probably always use private subnets for containers. And then for the load balancer, we're also going to actually use private subnets because we want this to be an internal facing load balancer with no outside oral access. This is a backend application, okay? So basically, we're gonna use the same settings for, for that, okay? I've already configured for development now, so I just have to do it for production, and then we're set, we're set. 
Uh, so let's go back to uh, the console here and go to the production account. Go to the VPC, go to outputs, grab uh, the VPC value, paste it right in there, and then grab the uh, private app subnets right there. Okay, those are the private app subnets. They're looking pretty good. Okay, that looks good too. And again, we're going to use both the same subnets for private as well uh, for load balancers as well as the ECS uh, containers or ECS um, container instances. So, okay, um, that looks good. We adjust the network set. The next step is the Route 53 record. So, <clears throat> In addition, uh, we're gonna also have uh, UFO create a, a kind of a vanity endpoint, just so we can refer to the application with a prettier endpoint. And we're gonna use a private hosted zone for this. Private hosted zones are pretty neat. You can basically create a private hosted zone and under anything, and, and then basically just have pretty URLs to it internally to your VPC network. And we're, to do that, we're just gonna use the AWS Route 53 Council. There are actually instructions up here in the docs folder here to use the CLI. I think it's going to be more instructive to just use the, the council, so I'm going to go ahead and go do that now. Okay, uh, I'm going to go back to dev. I'm going to start with that and go to prod. <clears throat> so let's click on Route 53. Click on Getting Started Now, since it's kind of brand new. It's a fresh account. Okay, and then I'm going to just call it dev.private. And it's important to choose a private hosted zone. Okay, uh, and then you have to choose the VPC that we created. This is a development VPC right there. So I'm going to go and create that. That one's done. So now let, we'll go to production now and do the same thing for production. <clears throat> uh, I guess there we go. I'm on the Route 3, getting started now. Create hosted zone, create hosted zone, prd.private. Okay. And then uh, we have to choose private there and we have to choose the VPC, and this is the production VPC. Okay. So, like that, we're done. We've created the uh, hosted zones already. <clears throat> and now if you scroll down here. Uh, we've created the hosted zone, and now we can, can tell UFO to also uh, use that hosted zone to create a, a, a Route 53 record that points to the load balancer it's going to create. So then we have this pretty vanity to endpoint, okay? And this is uh, the files for this is under settings, CFN development, and CFN production. And again, they've already been pre configured. We just have to actually go in there and comment it out. So I'm just going to open up development there, comment that one out, open up production there, and comment that one out. So and just make sure that this basically. Um, host his own uh, entry matches with what you created. Uh, I'm just using these same values right here. So if you use a different value, you have to kind of make sure those match, okay? Okay, so let's go back to here. Now we've basically downloaded the project, we've configured the project, and now all we have to do is kind of deploy it, okay? So I'm going to deploy it with uh, this, these two commands, and I'm gonna get, eh, I'm gonna run it like this, yes, okay. So let's go ahead and close this all off, go back to here. Now I'm basically ready to deploy. I'm deploying both, basically both to development as well as production, okay? So it's um, doing three steps. So the UFO tool, let's go back and look at the documentation here. It does three steps. Again, it builds the Docker image, it registers the ECS app initiation, and basically essentially deploys the app via CloudFormation actually. So right now it's on the pushing, it's building the Docker image and it's pushing up to the ECR uh, repository. And we kind of screw up here, here was the command earlier. UFO, um, it's just being truncated out. I type UFO, but sometimes when you paste in the Cloud9, it, it gets rid of the letter or so. Okay, so it does a UFO ship, right, back end, and I, I use the no wait option. That only, the no wait basically applies to the very last step, the, uh, the uh, deploying the ECS service step. That's when the CloudFormation update happens. All these other steps happen serially, okay? So what happened was it finished pushing, uh, okay, already, and then it registered task definitions, okay? And then uh, it started the deploy, basically, and then I started running the second command, which is the, the same, basically deployment instead of, instead of development is going on in production. So it's doing the same thing here in production. Now, <clears throat> once this kind of gets to the end here, you're going to see basically go into CloudFormation and it's going to say, okay, it's updating the stack. You could also check not just from the terminal here, if you don't use the note option, it's going to show here, uh, but you can also check uh, via CloudFormation. So let's just go actually to CloudFormation here. And so you can see the newly created stack that you have all created. So here's CloudFormation. Oh, oops, I'm on Route 53. Let's go CloudFormation. Okay, and see, it says demo backend web creating progress, and it says UFO stack, right? And this stack basically creates the ECS service, it creates the load balancer again optionally, and then creates the route through record, and then associates the route through record with the ELB DNS record. Okay, and um, the stack name here is basically the stack name of your application, so that's it, and you can kind of create this, and you can just look at the events here to see 
you know, to watch the progress of it, right? And here's the uh, production one. Remember in production, I used a, I didn't use the no wait option, so it's actually uh, passing right now. And there's also, you know, there's like a reference here with all docs. If you go to docs, see our reference, you can kind of see all the uh, reference, see our documentation here. There's also a status command. If you're using the no wait option, if you hit the status command, then basically what it does is it's going to start pulling CloudFormation and it's going to start listing out the same output. So you can always use UFO status there too if you want to kind of watch the status from the terminal. Okay, so this is going to take a little time. So instead of having you wait, I'm going to pause the video and come right back. So both of those ECS servers have finished deploying. Uh, I'll just show you right here. Let's go here and it's our finished deployment development here. And you can actually scroll down to events and see uh, on the events tab here how long it takes. Here's when the stack started at 12.54 and it ended at 12.57. So it took like four minutes or so. Okay, and uh, on production, let's also verify that. Uh, and it's also done right there. So after it deploys, um, what you can actually do is you can go to the CloudFormation stack that's managed by UFO here to look at the outputs. And you can actually grab the, both the DNS, the internal one here, as well as the, um, the so that's the ELB DNS record. Is, and you can grab the one that we, uh, we created with Route 53 also. And we could curl this to test it, right? Now, curling to this test is actually not gonna work unless you're on a machine within the VPC network. This machine right now, this is like my cl local Cloud9 machine essentially. And so it's not gonna actually work. I'm gonna try to curl it and it's not gonna work. I could try to curl the other endpoint also, and it's still not gonna work um, because this is an internal load balancer that we provision, okay? So that one just kind of hangs right there, right? So in order to actually test this, let's go back to the readme because it explains all this too. Deployment is successful, we need to test it. But what we have to actually do is, um, go on to an instance that's within the network and then the VPC network, and then we're gonna be able to test it. So what we gotta do is uh, maybe, uh, the easiest way to actually do this is actually just grab one of the instances that's uh, that's running the, um, the ECS cluster. So we're in the dev account here. So let's go to EC2. And uh, here's our kind of our cluster fleet, the spot one as well as the ASG one. I'm just grabbing the spot one, doesn't really matter. Okay, uh, and then just make sure I'm on the right account here and then just run that command. So it's uh, AWS SMS start session. And uh, the reference architecture actually uh, has everything, the ECS spa and you know, ECS ASG blueprints already uh, have SMS manager configured and set up. Uh, you, you do have to do some configurations and there's another repo that shows you exactly how to do that and script sets it all up. So you can use it uh, across accounts and all that. Anyway, I'm in the instance now. So I just basically started a session via session manager so hop directly into instance. And uh, from here, I can actually curl these endpoints because now I'm in the network. So watch me just curl this endpoint now, and now it returns 42. I can also just for good measure, uh, curl the other endpoint too, it just points to the same thing, and then we're good, okay? So we've tested now successfully. Okay, and uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, we could do the same thing for production too, but pr pretty much that's it. We are done. We basically deployed um, an application. Let's go back to the reference architecture diagram. We deploy an application both on development as well as on production. And then because this is a backend private application, you actually have to hop onto an instance within the VPC network in order to, to, to hit it, right? And we also created like, you know, Vandy, Route 53 records and all that. So that, that hopefully that was helpful. Uh, cheers.